want to say this to the church world not only in Nigeria and Africa but the whole world prosperity is not having genuine prosperity starts with being stinking men with messed up life loaded with sin but they have a few jeeps and a few cash in their account and they think they are prosperous that is a stinking life you are not prosperous you are a dying man there is no prosperity without righteousness genuine one that's what Jesus if you really want the kingdom type of prosperity blessed are these men people to be envied people that are fortunate people that are prosperous you are looking for keys to prosperity here are the keys it starts with imbibing certain set of values kingdom values one day we will not talk about the kingdom principle the ones you do so that you produce the results this one is the one you become these values make you like Jesus these values make you like your heavenly father these values make you to start living experiencing heaven right here on that and i don't know how if you notice that each one has a reward jesus was teaching it as seed and harvest he will tell you the value he will tell you the reward or the harvest it brings because the kingdom of god is built on a reward principle this seed planted this is what you're going to have this thing do it this is the result you're going to have and there is no failure in it there is no maybe in it it is failure proof anybody anywhere on the surface of the earth from any nation doesn't matter who you are you do this this is what you're going to see you will leave this set of values there's a kind of result you will see he said we blessed are the poor in heart for theirs is the kingdom of heaven notice it's not poor in cash it's poor in heart and it, it baffles me because david is like that and sometimes i'll be reading his psalms he will say he talk about how they were attacked him the poor he will address himself as the poor wait he was a very wealthy man it's an attitude of needy being in need of god be in need of his presence it's an attitude that helps you to see your naked they see your lack see your spiritual poverty and then you leads to a cry it's a form of meekness but it's a different type it's brokenness it's contriteness people that are like that they don't have problem when they've made a mistake you correct them you see that is what made david not worry about what nathan told him when nathan finished correct he turned his face on the wall the other man that didn't have poverty of heart saul went after the prophet he wanted public adoration pulled his garment and toys men like that human beings like that we enjoy the blessedness of heaven i don't have the time i don't have the time he said blessed are the meek you see people that are uh, that are teachable people that are humble people that are easy to correct easy to lead they are malleable that's what meekness is they are humble you know them if you correct them it's very easy it's one of our pastors who are training them in those days either he he gets something or you correct him next time he comes to buy you a gift to tell you thank you sir my future is safe he has another one beside him if you die correcting you will still have problem that one is off somewhere and he was the brightest one of the brightest among them is somewhere in the dustbin now young people that he led to christ are doing exploits a sense of meekness the blessedness of people like that is that they will inherit the earth not just heaven earth they will conquer they will conquer this earth because the distance between you and your next level is meekness the distance between you and wisdom is meekness without it you will humble yourself to learn nobody can the man that even comes to help you gets himself into trouble you know what the book of proverbs spoke about correcting a scorner he said don't do it he will hate you you will get yourself wounded by trying to help somebody he said but when you correct a wise man he will be yet wiser because of this attitude bring that man let him be last today yeah? bring him he's starting here let all kinds of people next time you're going to see him in the front because his that attitude makes him he will want to know what this man know that gave them this he will just be there please you are my mentor you please help me. even if you're good he will say you are my mentor because he can see something that's working in you that he doesn't have he will after a while he has collected all those things he has caught up with you guys he will not bring the little secrets he has had the opposite which is pride will not allow you pride has seven causes it brings one of them is that it insulates you for wise counsel 
then it, it top takes off your eyes and removes your ability to see you will have this physical thing you know, as decoration i'm sure you already know that it removes grace and will program you for this grace finally that man will fall Enter you see pride prophesy a fall it is surely happening Enter you see meekness prophesy and a lifting prophesy a break because there is nothing that will stop you see it's a law of sowing and reaping it's a law of action and reaction it's a principle of reward you see that this is what the future will look like you see the opposite that's why after showing how to download heaven you will notice that the next thing he will move to is how to unlock hell on earth maybe i should show you a few things you know but just before i get there you notice that he says something about the pure in heart people that are men of integrity people that don't have hypocrisy they don't have another motive those kind of people god draws them close they become god's friend you know like he said i talked to moses first those ones will see god if you read psalm 15 and psalm 24 you see the qualities of men like that even when they swear to their own heart they don't back up they are covenant keepers they ask who shall ascend into the hill of the lord who shall stand in your holy presence who shall stand in your holy hill and i'll show you the kind of man psalm 24 ended by saying they are the generation of them that seek you that seek your face home. apostle there is something i'm going to say now and i'll give you the mic i don't want anybody to ever forget it do you know all these teachings from matthew 5 to the end you know how jesus finally summarized it he said whatsoever you will that men do to you do the same to them for this is the whole law and what and the prophet he said the golden rule the law of love he said you see all this thing i'm teaching don't, don't kill don't lost after that is love that i'm teaching you it is the curriculum of love now opened up he said if you live by the law of love this is the new law he gave us in the new testament all these things you're now seeing is how to live it out you see if you live you have fulfilled the whole law and the prophet from genesis to revelation this is how to live it this is a warning i want to leave for us if you pass the exam of faith pass the anointing pass prayer pass giving pass all the other courses and fail in love you're going to live with f9 you fail the whole thing you miss the whole teachings of christ oh the apostles now picking it up from him now said the man that love have fulfilled all the love my brother glad to see you <laughs> it's one of the ones that will make you very proud this one this one they will bring by the head of glory there are many of them many of the mighty men but here is this this is how jesus concluded when he got to chapter 7 as he was ending he made three concluding statements one he said not all pastors will make heaven not all ministers will go to heaven not all ministers will make it he said not everybody preaching is real not even if you see miracles following them not even if they give prophecies it comes to pass and all those signs no so he gives us a small lecture on discernment he said it's by their fruits you shall know them the way a battery cannot produce a good fruit neither can a good fruit produce a battery you can go to orange tree to get a pineapple fruit that's how it will be don't just look at miracles don't just look at social media followership don't just look at crowd don't just look at the razzmatazz of ministry and we must teach our people these things to protect them from anti deception look at the fruits look at the values and these things he's teaching look at the life look at the fruits of character look at the values that a person is living by if a person is actually living kingdom values they cannot be for a certain side but they can copy the miracles just that they copied it during the time of moses moses will do this the magicians will reproduce moses will do this one the magicians will reproduce. they can copy the tongues but of course even like that time there is a dimension moses crossed the magicians couldn't follow and the century will repeat again Jesus warns us that not everybody preaching is going to heaven and you have to know how to follow men you have to know how to follow men the bible said i follow me as i follow who christ so those who are saying they're quoting paul and contradicting christ paul is telling you who he is following i'm following you christ 
and that's the only thing that qualifies you to be followed by men then he gives another warning not everybody who is a christian who professes christianity will make heaven is there are three concluding warnings things he said he said not all who said to me lord lord where enter the kingdom of heaven after dealing with ministers he said be well for false prophet that come unto you in sheep clothing warning us of all that he says by their fruits you know them and it's not just the fruits of character but the fruits of their ministry because wisdom is justified of our children when some people say jesus you are doing this thing by the power of Beelzebub, he said okay okay by whom do your children do it look at peter look at james look at you i go and interview your children i know if there's a place we took them to initiate them that's why as a minister you must raise men no because that will be your defense one day hmm? somebody's questioning me now i don't have time to answer you i'll send you to my men well meet them but they're doing some of them are even doing beating me in the game now we are doing greater exploits anyway they wonder not every christian will make it and he tells us what the issue is it's not professing christianity that gets you in it is practicing christianity it is those who do the will of my father which is in heaven if you ignore the teachings of christ these things he taught in the scriptures you are damning yourself and buying yourself an express ticket to hell i don't care how much grace that they have taught you there are millions of people who are in hell now for church choir there are millions of people who are in hell who were once men of god on earth there are millions of people who are in hell crying and god has allowed more, more than 300 i'm sure it's far more than that as at the time i did my research we covered every continent on earth we published a book on it called voices from the age of eternity we published people who were atheists people who were muslim that have been given a second chance it is the same thing they were all saying the pastors in hell they are prophets in hell they are ministers you see white saying it you see brazilian saying it you see people from an arab country and once people die they don't talk about muhammad it's only jesus it's only one God, one hell, one devil. It is something. Whenever relationships are falling apart, they will be the one that will initiate reconciliation. You don't know that the quality of meekness plus this attitude of seeking, that's what makes you the big person. In your marriage, you are the first to say sorry, even sometimes when you are right. Because being right is not what makes marriage work. seeking reconciliation practicing forgiveness practicing forbearance is what makes marriage work you know in forgiveness you have done something i forgive you forbearance is i forgive you ahead of time that's i've made room for you to make mistakes you know how you raise children you have forbearance eh? you allow them when they're learning how to walk you get on four they, you remove you have you make room for people to grow you make room for people to make mistakes if you're going to be a great pastor you have to be like that that's what god has done for all of us if God was counting everything, none of us would be here. Clap well. My people now cut it and make fun of me. I say, you say, clap well. Clap if you want to clap, clap well. Anyway, it's my way of saying, seller, when you want something to digest. Then he talked about the blessedness that comes to people who mourn. There are two types of people he's talking about first is people who are repentant who are sorry for their sin you see a man that is down he's messed up but he's genuinely contrite and sorry like david you are seeing a greater tomorrow sometimes god blesses them even more than before but there's another group if you're going through pain if you're going through disappointment i saw the reverend father when he was discussing the painful experiences he went through. you're going through trying times like job you've suffered losses please don't waste it those are the moments that can build for you treasures future treasures of course how we not be who i am today if not for those dark moments painful moments seasons of breaking those are seasons of refining those are the time when god is sending your foundation downward in life there are two types of growth there is phototropic growth you grow towards the sunlight that is outward manifestation you look for social media you look for, you know today now people are marketing themselves with social media all this that's wonderful when i went into ministry i was banned from anything media and advert for several years god he said you're not ready for publicity you're not ready for anything you are trapped attacks that you can't handle there are things i'm still working on in your character stay under authority while you are practicing what you are practicing i will tell you when you are ready it was seven years after but you know what shocked me that church we started in a, a palo number two because that is straight a flat a palo 
one month the place is filled up we are causing problem sitting in the corridor they got us one place hotel one month the hotel is filled we stayed in that one for three months because we we're looking for venue we moved to a bigger one one month again is filled. we had no signboard no handbill no nothing printed of anything of course one man tried to invite me when he saw what was going on and put me in the poster i told him i will not come remove me from that poster i'm not allowed to do that and i didn't show up he now took me serious the next time he was going to invite me he refused to do advert i didn't show up. god told me stay away from advert I'm, I'm i live in a different generation there was no social media in my generation but i'm going to tell you don't go carry your nakedness to the public sometimes it's your ignorance you're advertising stay there is another type of growth sir it is called gravitropic growth that is the root going deep this one you're going away from sunlight you're going away from adverts you're going away from publicity guess where the root is going towards darkness but that's where you lay the foundation that will carry how high the phototropic growth will go when that is finished seven years of my life had gone but that was the time i had the time to train the manpower that helped me develop the structures develop the curriculum we build seven different layers of school starting from foundation school that's when i had the time to uh, the things i used to i did in those days <laughs> like moses to download to go for a lot of training any sensitive important training i was there you see like a winner's chapel you see all that yeah i will be there i did foundation did, did, did the last training because in those days wolfie didn't have level three the year i heard that they introduced level three i reported and everywhere apostle i, I don't go alone no. You know, pastors like to go when they come out, they say, I got it. I heard from the Lord last night. No, I take my top 12 everywhere I go. I take them because I don't want to be the only one. When I come back, I'm struggling to explain this thing to them. There are 12 men. And what we do is if we go for a conference, like when we go for trainings abroad, during the breakout sessions, everybody will go, you this one, you this one, you this one. Me, I'll take one. So if there are 12 breakouts, we are in all the 12 breakouts. When we come back, you download for us everything you got. We done. Everybody comes to the same level. He gave me my 12 apostles that helped me. I will have, yes, because I had healing, gift, and evangelistic ministry at that time. I was not an apostle. You don't start as an apostle, even though that's your calling. You have to either start as a pastor, an evangelist, a teacher, or something. You don't start from the office of a prophet, even though that might be your calling. Like Paul, you have to sit in Antioch and grow. I always use trees to make the illustration. When you are born, your destiny is born with you, but the fruit will stay on the tree. Stay long enough to grow stay long enough to mature when he has matured then there is that day you say leave father and mother cleave to your wife and two shall be that's the day you start a new family am i correct so that's the same day you say separate from me paul and barnabas for the work where i have called them you don't launch out premature and then when you launch out what do you do you expand the family so that the family can grow from a tree to what the forest says not the prophet that who call me lord lord actually if you read it in luke 6 when jesus he said why do you call me lord lord and don't do what i tell you and the conclusion is the third element how he ended and everybody that had him knew that this one was different from the pharisees and all the other people for he spoke as a person that had authority the conclusion is he separated between the foolish and the wise virgin everyone who heareth these sayings of mine and do them is like a wise man that built his house on the rock the wind will come the rain will beat the house will be standing but anyone who heareth these sayings of mine and do them not is like a foolish man who built his house on sand there are 12 major things he dealt with i want you to go back and study them classify them and see if you can find them like how to unlock hell i, I didn't get into all of them look at the subject of reconciliation Oh, you have issue with your brother practicing forgiveness practicing reconciliation now you want to hold it you're looking for trouble apostle Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 explains how demons can get into a man of god so that you see some people it is demon of deception now it didn't start with that it is usually either immorality or strife Ephesians 4 dealt with strife 26 said be angry but sin not let not the sun go down on your anger you see that thing Jesus was dealing with them. He said, Neither give place to the devil. That's how people open the door for sin. If you allow or resolve anger, it will move to bitterness. When she becomes bitterness, it will open your heart for evil spirits. 
There are some you see on social media attacking everybody. Bitterness and immorality. It's either envy, strife, unresolved. It got to bitterness. You remember Saul? He started as envy. The young boy that is supposed to help him, that is helping him kill what he couldn't kill. You remember this? There were some other things that went wrong with his life too. Then he became possessed. A man that was once anointed. Heavenly Father, open the streets. Open it, Lord. Open it. Open it. Seal the heart of these men and women. Not only these ones that are coming into ministry that are being commissioned today. Every child of God that will hear the sound of our voice. Every man and woman of God here and those that are watching from around the world. Restore the foundation of biblical truths and values to every minister, to every heart, to every church, to every believer that will hear this message. Restore it, Lord. May that day that Pilate and prophesied when Nigeria will be known for righteousness and I pray not only for Nigeria but for all the nations that are being represented here and those that are connecting from around the world. This conference, let it usher us into the beginning of those days, Lord. Bless this house you have raised for your holy name. Slay all the giants that are standing before this mandate. Let your name be glorified among the nations. I thank you and I bless you in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, sir. I love you.